Mike, what are you writing this weekend to recalibrate a cautious call? Yeah, good, uh, good to see you guys. I mean, our call really hasn't changed. Uh, you know, uh, we're very disciplined on price. Uh, and as you know, we, we got tactically bullish last fall at 3500 because that was a good price. And now we're, of course, back to the high end of the range, and that's not a good price. Uh, and that's at the S&P level. That's not really what's been interesting over the last six or seven months, as you know. What's been interesting is what's going on under the surface. Um, I would say in the fourth quarter, that was a very hated rally uh, because it was led by kind of the old economy, financials, industrials, energy, materials. It was all based on, you know, the China reopening story, which was legitimate. And technology stocks obviously disappointed, and they did not trade well in the fourth quarter. So it was a hated rally because that's what people own. Now, of course, the S&P is trading at the same price it was in early December when we got cautious again, and tech is obviously going to the moon. And now this rally is love because these – you know, this is what people want to buy. This is what people want to own. It's a lot more interesting and, you know, kind of exciting to own AI and techn technological revolution than it is to own some those old economy stock that's, you know, well, why do I want to own this long term? So it's just an interesting development. We would characterize this as the bear market is continuing. Okay. This is what bear markets do. They, they're designed to fool you, confuse you, make you do things you don't want to do, chase things at the wrong time, probably sell them at the wrong time. And the overriding, we think the overriding driver, okay, of this year's rally has been increased liquidity. Liquidity has improved dramatically, both on a global scale and the weaker dollar has helped. That's going the wrong way now again. And then, of course, ironically, the banking failures that happened in March led to an injection of liquidity from the FDIC and the Fed. And we think those things have really conspired to drive the market. I mean, nobody talks about the fact that crypto is up 60% this year, okay? And, and then the next one, of course, is the is the tech world. So th this is what's going on. We think that the fundamental case does not support, you know, where stocks are trading today, whether it's at the index level or at the single stock level. And the second half is going to be a bit choppier and probably downward in the index. Mike, let's just talk about the index a little bit more. And great to have you with us, as always, particularly going into the long weekend. Mike, you really started the debate this week on this program and we reflected on your note from over the weekend into Monday when you said the following that there are many technical signals that conflict with the idea that this is the beginning of a new cyclical bull market there was a short list after that of those signals and one was extreme narrowness poor breath we presented that to Savita Subramaniam a peer of yours over at Bank of America and she said narrow breath is not a precursor for doom and gloom Mike I just wanted to give you the opportunity to respond to that what is it about narrow breath that you think signals something at the Index level. Well, um, I, mean, I think there's you could debate this one way or the other. Meaning, when you make a market low, you typically do have you know severely negative breath. That is a good sign. However, the index is usually down with it. So we think where we are is the index is telling you things are rosy, things are fine, and the breath is telling you otherwise. And then when we put our fundamental overlay on top of that, which is you know we're way out of consensus now on the earnings front. Then we can make the conclusion that the internals, right, the breath is being one of those, but the internals and the leadership is telling you that growth is going to be a problem in the second half of this year. Whether that's an economic recession or not, doesn't it? we think it's going to be an earnings recession that's way worse than what people are currently modeling. And look, I want to go back to the beginning of the year. You know, you guys are good readers of our reports. You remember in the beginning of the year, I was somewhat nervous that everyone was in the same camp at that point. We were... Yeah. Our view is very consensus on the fire and ice, you know, the tightening and then the slowdown. And so we were trying to figure out, well, how could how could everybody be right? That doesn't work. And, th and so what we've done now is we've worked off that oversold condition. And more importantly, now I would say the consensus is actually optimistic on earnings again. And that's just where we completely disagree. So, Mike, can we just build on the challenge to the index level retesting the lows of, of last year, given the muscle? of five or so names doing just ridiculous things up 100% plus Meta, NVIDIA, et cetera. Is that a big enough challenge to the view that we can retest the lows of last year? Well, not necessarily, not at all. In fact, it kind of sets us up where it's probably inevitable now because what's happening is you're, you're basically forcing people into these stocks at bad prices now. Um, I mean, you know, the valuations last fall on these stocks in particular was extremely attractive. And if you look at the performance of all of these names, with the exception perhaps of the one this week, which you know earnings are going up, 
the earnings are not driving these stocks. It was 100% multiple expansion, which goes back to our liquidity question. So look, the price is wrong in our view because the earnings are probably going to be wrong for most of these stocks, not all of them, but most of them. And so from here, we think it is still a stock picking game. And of those six, seven, eight stocks, my guess is two of them will probably be okay and the other ones will not because there's, they are the economy, okay? They can't avoid the economic slowdown yeah. and the top line slowdown that we see in the second half of this year. Mike, I'm maybe a bit off your remit, but I got to go here. Just percolating in the zeitgeist into June is the once again debate of active versus index usage in the equity market. Give us your update on the value of active versus the value of index investing. Really interesting confluence right now because, you know, you could argue both are working at the moment, right? I mean, you know, having the right stocks in your portfolio has been really the only way to make money this year. The problem is, is that those stocks are such a big part of the index. The passive person can say, look, my passive strategy is working as well. You know, and, and so we still think active will uh, have a comeback here. Um, as we go through the next couple of years, it already is to some degree. But boy, it's been, you know, it's it, it, the market. Once again, the market is doing a very good job of kind of fooling us into whatever we want to believe. Um, we think active will be uh, the place to be for the next two or three years. It's going to be a comeback there. <clears throat> Mike, uh, dovetail this with Ellen Zentner. Take the recession call of Morgan Stanley and dovetail into your caution on equities. Yeah, so Ellen and team, I mean, they're not looking for a hard landing. What they are looking for, though, is a very sluggish uh, economy. So it's sort of zero percent uh, GDP growth. Right. Now, that, you know, that's fine if you still got price. Our view is that zero percent GDP growth will lead to bad price. And we're already seeing that in the good sector. And then we've done some consumer work recently, which is we're starting to see signs that even the high end is starting to pull back on spending intentions on services. So, you know, services is 70 percent of the economy. It's, you know, goods are 70% of the S&P 500 earnings. So in other words, the economy can stay kind of at zero, but that's not gonna be a good outcome for S&P earnings in our view. Mike, do bears eat lobster? <laughs> Well, we can't afford it because we're bearish. You know, I mean, <laughs> lobster's, lobster's expensive. Plus, it I'm, is. A, plus I'm, a, I'm cheap anyway, so you know. 